<clears throat> so, <clears throat> the next eight slides, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, pipe, uh, pipe tobacco production. Um, and Jim, you'll recognize these slides, but it was actually it was uh, <clears throat> drawings uh, done by one of my father's uh, old friends. He was an artist or an advertising guy. And when my father started um, or came into his factory, uh, he asked the guy to develop these pictures uh, of, of the factory. Now, they are kind of romantic uh, looking pictures, so they're not really a true uh, visual, if you will, of, of, the, uh, of the factory. Uh, so eight steps to tobacco manufacturing uh, and it all starts uh, obviously with the leaf tobacco and um, leaf tobacco you know is grown pretty much all over the world and the, uh, the one leaf that's used the most in pipe tobacco and it's the biggest crop around the world is uh, Virginia tobaccos or flu cure tobaccos and flu cured Virginia tobaccos are grown from the United States to South America, Africa, India, China, uh, even in Europe. There's quite uh, quite large crops in Italy, Poland, and places like that. The best quality, per se, of Virginia tobacco is actually from the States, some Brazil, and some African uh, Virginia is also very nice. Um, but the biggest producer of leaf tobacco is actually China. So China has a huge crop every year and because they produce a lot of, uh, of cigarettes and a lot of the Virginia tobaccos is used for uh, cigarette production. Anyway, we buy the leaf um, uh, being it Virginia tobacco or uh, Burley tobaccos, which is the air cured tobaccos, uh, being it Latakia and so forth. And then each day um, different grades of leaf is put together and blended. Um, into one blend and normally th we use up to like 13 to 15 different grades because uh, tobacco being a farm product it's going to change every year every third year or so because of the sunlight and so forth so you want to be able to take out one grade and replace it with another one without really uh, making a difference in the total picture or the total blend if you will so you can change out a certain grade of tobacco, replace it with something else that is similar but not quite the same, and then still have the, same, the, the blend as a total taste the same. So it's a little bit of a science and uh, you know, most pipe tobacco factories, they have a, a department just dealing with the leaf tobacco buying and the development of the new tobaccos. After the uh, blending of the, that today's uh, production, if you will, the today's uh, blend, the uh, tobacco is conditioned. The leaf tobacco, when it comes in, is very brittle. It's uh, very low moisture. It's been sitting uh, in big boxes for probably two or three years. So it's very dry, it has a low moisture of maybe five or six percent. So it needs to be conditioned. And when I say condition, it needs to have some um, uh, steam added to it uh, so the tobacco becomes nice and soft. And um, so this steam is usually added on into a cylinder uh, under, very, under some kind of pressure. And um, it's also um, then, you know, they make sure with the cylinder that rotates that every, every leaf gets its share of the, the steaming process. Um, <clears throat> after that, uh, the steaming, uh, when the tobacco is nice and, and moist, uh, we apply what we call a casing sauce. And a casing sauce is, consists often of uh, water, sugar, uh, honeys, licorice, a lot of licorice, and uh, an occasional other natural ingredient and that is added on also in a cylinder uh, it's sprayed on hot to the tobacco and it's really the casing sauce is often what you can taste in the tobacco it's not necessarily the room note 
uh, but it's really the, the the foundation of the taste that you have in a in a pipe tobacco. Moving on, uh, the after the the casing sauce is applied to the blend, uh, the today's production or the blend uh, of the, of the day is then put into these um, resting bins as you see here and uh, normally they're laid into these they're you know they're about 30 feet 35 feet long and they're laid into on conveyor belts so it gets uh, nicely mixed up uh, with the different leaves and uh, the purpose of the resting bins is really for the tobacco to absorb this casing sauce so they normally let the one production sit overnight while they empty up uh, the other uh, bin from the day before and so it needs to be resting for about 12 hours or so so it can really absorb the, uh, the casing sauce and that normally a, 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 a normal production or day's production is about uh, 25 to uh, 100 pounds to 3,000 pounds. So it's it's quite a lot of tobacco. <clears throat> After the uh, tobacco has rested, if you will, uh, then it's time for the drying process because after the casing sauce is applied, the, the, the steaming and so forth, the tobacco is very wet all of a sudden. Uh, it has a high moisture or maybe 30-40% and it needs to be uh, brought back down to about 20% or so and that is done in a oven if you will the tobacco is really uh, via via a conveyor belt it's it's um, fed into this huge oven also a cylinder oven and uh, it goes through the oven at about you know the slow speed but uh, with a um, uh, temperature of about 400, 450 degrees, so it's it's pretty hot. So you really want to bring the moisture down. So certain after that, certain blends are just then um, um, fed on to being cut. Others, like the navy flake, the slices you see over there, they are actually pressed. So, and that's uh, the uh, Cavendish finish or the, the pressing um, uh, finish or method, if you will. The tobacco for the Navy Flakes or for the flake tobaccos are pressed in, these, um, in this mold, if you will. It's six pounds that is put into this mold. It's swung around and then a, a cylinder comes up and presses the tobacco together. And then it comes out afterwards in these blocks of cakes about this big six pounds uh, pressed together and um, after that's done then they are put into these high presses you see in the back there and they're uh, stacked into these cylinders or into these presses and and normally they sit there they'll, they'll sit there under high pressure for about five to six days so once it comes out this brick if you will when it comes out it's it's hard as nails it's really I mean you can kill a guy with it so it's it's uh, pretty pretty um, pretty hard um, and that's um, that's really how you make flake tobaccos sometimes you add a little heat to the uh, high presses as well uh, that's depending on which which blend you're uh, making that day Then one of the final steps, um, if you will, is the um, is the top flavoring. So the top flavoring is normally what you, what you can smell when you open up a can of tobacco or a pouch of tobacco. If you smell a cherry or a vanilla or apricot or whatever it be, that's applied here uh, as one of the last steps. It's uh, sprayed onto the blend and uh, depending on what flavor you want to uh, add to it uh, it's done in this uh, also in a cylinder and uh, the top flavoring you, you don't really often 
taste that much, but it's really the room note and it's whatever, when you pick up the, the tobacco and you smell something, that's what you smell is the top flavoring. <clears throat> then uh, one of the, well, just the, the cutting process is actually normally before the flavoring. Um, and the cutting process is usually, a, it's a guillotine cut, the tobacco is fed in, and it's cut uh, with a guillotine uh, cutter. Um, and then uh, the tobacco is packed. Um, and the, the packing process, you know, is anywhere from being at uh, tins, pouches, bags for uh, loose tobacco, so it can be anything. Um, and also, after the cutting and the flavoring process, the tobacco is usually, usually rested for about two or three days uh, because you want to make sure that the, uh, the flavoring is married well into the, uh, to the, uh, to the blend. One uh, area that we, doesn't, we don't show here either is the black cavendish process. Um, as you may or may not know, Black Cavendish is really, uh, it's the Virginia tobaccos that's uh, made black on the high steam in the factory as well. So when the steaming, when you have the steaming process, it, the, black, uh, the tobacco turns black. And um, that's a very, you know, Black Cavendish is a very popular uh, pipe tobacco, i.e. Uh, Captain Black, for example. Uh, so it's not something that's bought as black tobacco, it's actually done in